Hey guys, my name is Jared Wellman. I'm an instructor at the Bernardo Freya. I'm here again with my friend Adrian. We're gonna do some back escapes. I've got two type of escapes that I want you to think about from a basic back mount position with a seatbelt. These are really white belt level escapes that you need to know. So let's start with this from a seated position. Let's actually come this way, Adrian. So we're gonna start first with just looking at what the back mount is. This is how we teach it a lot. Almost never in live rolling am I sitting, but I wanna pay attention to a couple of things. The first is gonna be, he has an overhook and he has an underhook. The overhook side, he's gonna make a fist and almost punch me right in the heart. The second, the underhook is gonna clench here, no thumbs, no thumbs. So fist, then wrist. And his elbows are tight. Look, this is the space, that's his seat belt grip. Then he's gonna have his hooks in, his legs. And the goal of the legs, not so much the toes here, but the goal is to control the inside of my hips. So when we turn and we fall to the side, this is the most common way it's taught in the beginning, it's falling to the overhook side. So he has a seatbelt grip, hooks in, four points when he controls me for three seconds here. So back mount is a really good attack for competition or self-defense because I can't see him. His head's in tight, everything's here, and obviously it leads to chokes. I have three ways that I want to defend this, and we're gonna show when we switch the overhook to the underhook side, so we'll pay attention to both of those. But for the overhook side, three steps. The first step all the time is to protect my neck. So if he's in tight here like this, and I start dealing with the feet or moving my hands around with no neck protection, he's gonna choke me right away. So as soon as I feel this, I want my opposite arm to come in here along his forearm. I make a C grip and I'm gonna slide it. So imagine he's tight here, this is hard to get in. He wants to choke me. I have to grind it in and I'm gonna use my chin and drop my chin and I don't wanna expose my throat. So I'm driving in here and a very important tip is I'm clamping down with my elbow. I want to keep my hand over his wrist. So I'm heavy here, clamping down. My second hand comes here, connects it, and look, I'm going to pull him down and stretch. I'm not extending my head up. I'm pulling him down. Now, a couple things happen. I'm keeping this tight around my head so that it's very hard for him to lose that arm if he wants to, and I'm keeping this arm blocked. If I come in low, he can grab my wrist to push down, and now I only have one arm to defend. It's very difficult. So he makes the seatbelt. Opposite arm, C grip. Slide in here right over the top of his wrist, so above the middle of his forearm, almost the thumb to my, my, chin, my, uh, my chin right here. So if he's in tight, I may have to dig in here. I get my second arm, elbows tight, and I pull down. That's the first step. I've cleared the neck, and I'm protecting my neck. Second step is gonna be the hips for this. The third step will be clearing the shoulders. So first was neck, second step is the hips. You can see his hooks are blocking me from moving. Right now, my knees are pointing this way. What I want to do is get both my feet to the mat. And by doing this, even if he keeps his bottom hook tight, I bring my knee up. Now I need to spin and turn. Notice how I'm keeping control up here on the arm so he doesn't get to choke me. I'm sitting on his leg right now. A very common reaction is this top hook will come across my hip and he'll want to go to mount. I don't want that. So if I'm here and I feel that hook coming across, I can block it and then keep walking myself out. Still, I might need to go back and forth from controlling the, the neck and blocking him coming to mount. Now, once I'm here, first step was the neck, second step was clearing the hips, the third step is clearing my shoulders. A lot of times, if I'm very tight here, look, my top shoulder's up, it's not to the mat. I want to get flat to the mat, but I'm not there yet. Two ways I can do this. The first is I'm gonna update my grip. So I'm pulling here, and I'm gonna use this hand and point up. If my elbow's bent, I can't get my shoulder to the mat. I'm going to point up and drop my shoulder, okay? So very important movement. We'll do it a couple times so you can see it. But now my shoulders are on the mat. This arm, I'm going to hold heavy. Again, if he comes up to mount, try to come up to mount, like I'm holding it so hard. If I let go and he pulls this arm out, that's where the mount comes from. So I know he needs this arm to come to mount. Once I clear, I'm turning in, I'm going to re-grip and push over my head. Now I've got a grip here. This is a bit of a scramble often. It's unlikely I'll go to side control or to mount, but very commonly this leg is still low and as I turn up, I'll come into a closed guard. This is the most common response I've seen. But it's possible if I'm fast and get ahead of him, I might sit up to mount, I might sit up to side control. So it's not just escaping, it's escaping to the next position. So he gets a good seatbelt grip and we fall here. Boom. First step, protect the neck. Second step, clear the hips. Third step, clear the shoulders. So cross grip, dig in deep, update, so I have two hands here. Pull down, and I'm strong. First step completed. 
Second step, clear the hips, and I'm walking out, okay? Sometimes I'll shoot my foot down like I did there. I can shoot my foot down as I plant my feet and spin. Sometimes if he's really tight with his bottom hook, so he's tight here, just by turning, right? Be careful you don't catch their toes and break their ankles. Come back this way a little bit. But I wanna make sure that as I'm here tight, even if he's tight and heavy here, that look, if he's here like this, I can clear that toe off. Now my knees are to the ceiling. And now I can walk off and I'm good from here. The first thing we talked about is clearing my arm up here, heavy to the mat, back's on the mat. I can re-grip and push the arm over. Let's look at a second way. As I'm here, let's say he's squeezing really tight and I can't get my shoulder down. So what I can do is still holding this grip and pull it down, bring this arm in. I'm bringing it in and I'm gonna make a fist. If you guys can see this, I'm making a fist here and I'm gonna grip and break his grip. So it's here, I pull down as much as I can, palm down, I come underneath, make a fist right against where his connection is. I push, and now look, I catch that, and I come over. So the same ending of the arm over the head. We do it, back up a little bit. Here. Good, so he's locked. So I blocked here, I cleared my hips, and as I got here, he starts squeezing tight. This happens a lot. He wants this shoulder. If I get the shoulder on that, I win. If he keeps the shoulder up, he's winning. So I bring my hand in and make a fist. Look how I'm heavy here. I update the fist, elbows down tight, I push. And as I push, my top hand is naturally gonna grab his hand. I push and catch. Update to a baseball back grip. As I'm here, I'm pulling it out. If he tries to come up to mount, it's so hard for him. I clear over my head, now I come up, and there's our scramble. So let's do this from a couple different angles. All right, we'll start from here. I'll do both escapes. We fall, first thing, right away. Tight, cross grip, down tight, elbows tight. Second thing, clear. Let's actually show even a little mini thing here. Sometimes I can't get this foot turned up. Look what I can do, I can bring my knee up to me, grab his toes, come down, and plant. So one more time, he's being really tight, he digs his heels down and he's bringing his knees in. It's like a backpack, I just can't move my legs. Bring my knee to me, Find his toes, just to hold him. Now I extend my leg, and look, I can turn. Walk myself out, and I'm heavy here. Neck is protected, hips are clear. I have two options here. Point to the sky, tuck my shoulder, and re-grip and push the arm, or bring my palm in, make a fist, break the grip, catch that arm. Now turn. I even sometimes, I come up, I like to grab this leg and push, because now I can get myself to a good position instead of going in the guard. So those are the two back escapes for the overhook side. This is what I'm thinking. Anytime somebody's coming here, I'm gonna use those, okay? If we fall and we fall to the underhook side, this is the underhook side, we're gonna have to use a different style of escape. So let's look at that. So, still a seatbelt grip. And as he falls, his head's in tight. So it's the same kind of thing for me. I wanna think of three steps, protect my neck, Clear head and shoulders, or clear shoulders uh, and then hips. Protect my neck, clear hips and shoulders, right? So when I'm here, I gotta protect the necks, number one step. But I don't have to worry nearly so much because I'm blocking a lot of his, his ability to choke with this bottom arm. But he can still choke me if he lets go of this. He could be here, but now he needs the other hand to finish. It's hard to do a one arm choke here. So if we come back, I can pull down with one hand. I don't necessarily need to go here, I can, but I can pull down with one hand and have some pretty good success. But now I need to clear his head. His head's in the way. I'm trying to get my head to the mat and his head's in the way. A lot of ways to do this, but this is a really easy one. I can see where he is. I'm going to push up. Now, if I just push a little bit, be strong, it's hard. So look, I push my body away. So if I'm tucked here, not my arm, I might get it. But look, I push my body away and I find that space. Now it's mine. I'm here protecting my neck. I've gotten here. I want my shoulders to the mat. I'm going to wiggle out a little bit and not stay near him, I want to turn and look. If I stay near him, he's still behind me. I want my back to the mat. So I turn and look. From here, I'm already mostly clear. I can pull here, same idea of walking my hips up. Now notice I'm sitting on his bottom arm now, so I'm gonna work the top arm, and as I'm here, you can see the guard is right there. Oops, as I spin up, right into closed guard. One more time, sorry. Caught you in the face, Adrian. So one more time, the underhook side. Now this is a lot to remember. When you're thinking back escapes, you're already in a bad position. Overhook or underhook side lead two different directions just because of how it kind of controls the shoulders, but you have to learn them both. 
It's less common for the underhook side to happen, but it does happen in free rolling. So same three rules, protect the neck, then I got to clear hips, I got to clear shoulders. I want to clear my shoulders first since they're close to the mat. So look, I get down. Sometimes if his head's back, I might just drop down. But if he's being good, I have to work this and I control to here. Now I'm pretty good. If I get his shoulders really tight like this, I work the hips. So I'm keeping myself good, but I clear the hips. Look, I can reach for this. Feet to the ceiling, just like the other escape, I walk out. As I get here, I'm using my foot and I push it hard to come back up and I close that. So those are the two escapes that I'm gonna see most commonly for white belts learning fundamentals is that idea of overhook or underhook and three steps. Protect your neck first. If they choke you and you tap out, that's the end of the match. So protecting the neck, looking to cross grip and pull down, or if on the underhook side, I'm just keeping that arm down, chin tucked, fighting for this space. But once I've protected the neck, I'm gonna clear the shoulders or the hips depending on what's free. If I clear the hips, I'm gonna clear the shoulders next and vice versa. That's it. Try it out. We'll do a couple of these moves at the end so you can watch if you want the details.